welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. A reset of the prophetic movement is upon us. The second wave of prophets is rising in this hour. We stand at the edge of a new era in the prophetic. We're gathering the international prophetic community at the Global Prophetic Center, a hub for prophetic training, prophetic labs, summits, networks, and lighthouses. It's time for prophets to go deeper. It's time for seers to soar. It's time for prophetic voices to rise up and decree what says the Spirit of God with accuracy that causes the world to pay attention. The Global Prophetic Center offers proven prophetic systems and structures to equip you to walk worthy of your calling and to prophesy with precision, boldness, diplomacy, and wisdom. Get hands-on training and mentoring in a safe environment that breeds true prophetic community and learning. Receive impartation and activation. Sharpen your gift and avoid prophetic pitfalls. Get commissioned. Get networked. Get sent out with the word of the Lord in your mouth and the confidence to release it. Begin your journey today by applying at globalpropheticcenter.com. Welcome to Supernatural Life. My name is Patricia King, and I'm going to serve as your host today on the program. You know, I was just reading in Daniel 7 how the prophet said that there's going to be a time when the enemy is going to speak out against the saints of the Most High and wear them down. And it wasn't just an attempt to wear them down. He was actually going to wear them down. But the good news is, as everything turns around in favor of believers and we get the full dominion and take everything. Now, you might be watching the program right now and you think, oh man, that sounds like my life today. I feel so worn down. I feel tired of battle. I am in a really um, hard place right now. Well, you know what? This program is especially for you. We're going to talk about end time vision. We're going to talk about what God is doing today with my special guest, Anna Werner. Anna, it's always a delight to partner with you in kingdom, in kingdom assignments. And it's wonderful to have you on the program today. Thank you. For Anna is a prophetess and an intercessor and a passionate lover of Jesus Christ and an author of many books. And your newest book is The Warrior's dance. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the warrior's dance. And this book uh, came as a result of an encounter with God. And I was wondering if you could share that. Yes, I had this encounter where I saw kind of an end time battle scene and I saw the enemy's camp and then I saw the bride of Christ and there's this war going on. And when in the midst of that, there was this sound I heard and it was this sound coming from the Father. And what astonished me, I looked around, I could see the Bride of Christ all carrying these little drums, and they started matching that sound that they were hearing. And as they matched the sound, the enemy retreated. And after I had that encounter, I thought, wow, that's it. It comes from when we match the sound of God, that we can really, um, you know, gain victory when we're in the time of spiritual warfare. Now, when you mention that we, um, you know, when we match the sound of God, what is that sound? Yeah, so it's so hard, right? Like when you're in warfare and you feel so weary and, and I've been there, you know, and to be able to hear the voice of God clearly and what is it that he says about my current circumstance. Not look at what's in the natural, but be able to match what he says. So it's really powerful to take the words of God and decree and declare it like Psalms 2, decree and declare into the circumstance. What is it, God, that you're saying? I love that because in that way, we become the voice for the word of God. So it's his his word, our voice, and we're in sync. Right. It's awesome. Yes, and we're matching our faith 
with mm -hmm. what is it, God, that you're saying? Right. And faith's our currency, right? So then we gain victory and we gain momentum when we can match what he said. Right. Now, in your book, you mention about the battlefield that's in the mind. And that a lot of times, I think that that's where it has to be won, right? Right. Is when we align our thoughts with his. But maybe you can share some insight on it because I believe that a number of you that are watching, you've been harassed in your mind and you've got all these negative thoughts. And I mean, we need each other at times like that because, you know, I don't know about you, but I sometimes need to be reminded, Patricia, you know, keep your keep your mind on the truth and not on the circumstances that's happening. Right. And, and often, like, I think people think, okay, when they're in the middle of warfare, Okay, somebody's got to be cursing me somewhere. Maybe there's a witch somewhere, you know. But the enemy truly comes. His biggest battlefield is right here in our mind. Right. He tries to get our thoughts. It says that he's the chief liar. Yeah. So he tries to get us to hook. When I say hooks, he hook into, he tries to get us to hook into his lies. Um, and then we, we lose, you know, our momentum. We lose everything. So like an example, the other day I I heard this little lie came into my mind of, I can't do something. I just, I can't. And I thought, wait a second, <laughs> yeah. wait a second, that's not God. And I said, okay, that's a lie of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And see when, and then I thought, okay, well now what's your truth say, God? What's your truth say? And it says in the word, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I said, okay, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. So I'm gonna break off this lie right now. Okay. And, and by that, I, you know, my right. faith increased, increased. Absolutely. I, uh, I know for sure the enemy always tries to tempt us to put our trust in ourself. Mm -hmm. So when he says to us, you can't do something, it's because he wants us to realize, yes, I, you know, I can. And this is, you know, I'll just stay here. Um, but really, he's his own worst enemy, because when you come to the end of that lie, you'll find the truth. It says, yes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I just believe that there's some of you that are watching right now that you have actually had that exact lie told you even in the last 24 hours that, mm -hmm. you know, into your thoughts, you said, I just can't do that. I'm not good enough or I'm not skilled enough or, you know, I wouldn't be able to bear that responsibility. I'm not able. And if you can identify that lie right now, cast that down and say, no, I'm going to believe your truth, Jesus. You're going to strengthen me because I can do all things through you who strengthens me. And I just believe that a battle is being won in the, in the mind right now. But you have really seasoned your life with skill to be able to combat these things. So you have a daily discipline that you do to help. And that might help the viewers tremendously. It's very practical, but daily I ask the Lord, I go before him and I say, God, is there any sin in my life first that I need to repent for? Because it's so important mm -hmm. that we recognize that when we have sin in our life, it gives access to the enemy. And I don't want to give the enemy any access or any landing ground right. in my life. And so I ask him, and if, if Holy Spirit reveals something, I repent from it. And then I ask the Lord, secondly, I say, now, is there any lie that I'm believing right now? Would you bring it to surface? And if he does, then I say, I, I repent for that and I break my agreement I love this. with this lie. And God, now show me your truth because we have to put back in the truth. Right. You know, and that's what I take and declare. And this thing about catching lies and breaking them off is so important, Patricia, because I've prayed actually for so many people for healing right. in their bodies. And like I just prayed with a girl recently where she had been abandoned as a young girl by her mother. And what came to surface was that she was not wanted or not mm -hmm. desired. And when that came, that lie came to surface and I, we, we were able to break that and say, now what does the father say? I always wanted you. I always have loved you, my daughter. So Guess beautiful. what happened? She, she was totally healed. healed. Yes. So this is such a key to so many people. I've seen that need healing physically mm -hmm. are needing 
healing in their bodies yep. is being able to catch the lie that might be there. Right. I think it's really important for all of us as believers to understand that we are the one who actually gives the devil a landing strip, right? Right. Like if we believe a lie, it's actually an invitation for the enemy to come in and harass us or oppress us. And, mm -hmm. and yet Jesus is the spirit of truth. So we have access to truth, right? And so we can receive truth rather than believe the lie. And I love that little daily discipline that you do. Now, in your book, you give us a couple of examples, really good examples of spiritual warfare mm -hmm. and, and overcoming. Do you want to share those right now? Yeah. So my husband and me were actually missionaries for a time in India. And we had a crazy experience. When we first got there, we were staying in a hostel and he got very, very, very sick. And you know, here I was in India, I don't speak the language, I can't read the signs, and my husband is not able to hold food down for many, many days. And so I asked the Lord, okay, what do I do here? Would you show me what's attacking him? And I heard Holy Spirit say, go look in the bathroom. Now this sounds crazy, but I went down the hallway, it was a hostel, so it's a shared, you know, bathroom, went down the hallway and looked in the bathroom stall. And when I opened it up, I saw a sadhu priest which is like a um, witch doctor fortune teller right. there in India. He was sitting on the toilet seat and he had my husband's picture wow. in his hand and he was doing these weird chants. And I remember I got that righteous anger thing came up in me and I just said, in the name of Jesus, you can have no power or authority over my family and over my husband. I plead the blood of Christ right now and you have to go. And just right then he was gone like that. And I thought, that was so wild. I went back to our room. My husband was sitting up. I mean, he That's hadn't sat up in days and he was hungry. And I went, wow. And then the second thing I had with warfare was I actually combated the spirit of death when I was pregnant with my second born. Like my first, mm -hmm. I actually lost in a miscarriage. And then I was pregnant with my second and and the spirit of death walked into my room one time wow. when I was ministering in New Orleans. And he came towards me. And the first thing I did was I worshiped because I was in so much pain. I went into all the symptoms actually of miscarriage where I was hemorrhaging and I was in so much like searing pain. And all I could do was just barely worship. And as I worshiped, the enemy retreated the spirit of death, which is important for us to hear because right. worship causes the enemy to yeah. flee. So he retreated and then, but then he came back at me and three times he came back at me. The second time he came back and he said all this horrible things. And he said, your baby shall not live. And he was laughing at me. And then what I did then is I took the word of God and I said, no, by his stripes, I've been healed. And I used scripture to awesome. combat. And then it retreated. And then the last time he came at me, and I started to prophetically just decree, God, but this is what you've said about my baby. Wow. And I said, she shall be. Now, I didn't Come know on. she was a girl at the time. So that was me. Just like, came out of your I mouth. Said, she shall be <laughs> like a little warrior who's full of faith and joy and all these things. And then finally, he left at that. Wow. And now my daughter's six years old wow. and she's everything, everything that I said, That's you know. so awesome. Yeah. So awesome. Thank you. You know, just as she was sharing that, I felt that there's someone watching actually that you just had a miscarriage and you've been afraid to get pregnant again because it was so traumatic. But right now the Lord is healing you from the trauma and he is repositioning you to stand on the truth and you will make the devil sorry he ever tried. And this, this child that God is going to give you is going to be so precious. So do not fear. Stand on the word. Start decreeing it. Start declaring it and give God the glory because great things are going to happen. We are very excited to have Anna Werner, and we're featuring her new book, you know, topics out of this. Anyways, The Warrior's Dance is an amazing prophetic exposition of what the Lord has shown her and how to position yourself in warfare encounters. And so this is so exciting. Now, in your vision. I mean, you had two visions that inspired you to write the book. Mm -hmm. And the second one was about the Lord giving out dancing slippers. Yes. I was taken into a vision and I was running towards Jesus in the throne room and I was wearing this bridal gown. But when I looked down, my feet had these really old, worn out 
tennis shoes on and I was looking back and I was out of breath, which I think is where a lot of us are when we're in warfare, right. just weary and out of breath, you know, but I was running towards Jesus and he handed me these dancing slippers and he said, no, this is how you do this here. This is how you have victory. Wow. And so I put on these dance slippers and I just started to worship Jesus there in the throne room. And as I worship, there's just beautiful colors were released. And mm. um, it just changed my perspective on, on how do we do spiritual warfare? Hey, we do it from the place of victory and worship. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. And you've had a strong word about perspective and how important that is. Yeah, when we're in warfare, it's so important to get God's perspective on our circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus, always, like in Luke 8, when the little girl was dying. Everyone said, she's dying. She's dead. You know, and he said, no, no, she's, she's just sleeping. sleeping, right? So Jesus always could see beyond. And that's so hard to do right. when we're in the thick of it. Yeah. But when I have an example, when I was writing my very first book and every door seemed like a shut door, God said, I want you on it to start walking. And so I train, I had just had a baby. So my, I wasn't in physical condition to do this. And so I train, I train, I did a walk-a-thon and in, I was going to walk 25 miles. Instead, I walked 33 because I got lost. <laughs> but it's interesting, that number, just hold on to that. But 33 miles, as I met my friends with just an intimate group way for me at the end, I, and I was limping in pain. I walked that last five miles. I limped there and I heard God's voice say, you just birthed something mm. in the spirit, Anna. And that was the change for me. The moment of birthing of my book, my ministry, everything got momentum in that moment. Wow. But see, in the natural, I wanted to quit. Like I, in those last five sure. months, I thought, God, why am I doing this? It doesn't look like I'm getting anywhere. I'm, is this ever going to end? And I just felt this word for somebody watching this right now. You're in the thick of it. And I feel like the Lord has the same word for you. Do not quit. Don't quit. Keep going forward. You are making so much momentum in the spirit. Although you might not see it right now, you've got to keep going forward. But you are mm -hmm. not a quitter. I just want to speak that word over you. And I want to just speak hope and life into your circumstance right now. God is about to, he's breathing in it. Although you don't see it, trust, trust him that he is about to break through for you. So good. I, I've always said, if you don't quit, you win. Yeah. You know, you just have to stay on that word that God gave you. Stay on his word of victory and don't consider anything else. Just keep going and you'll always win. Um, when we were watching the or listening to your vision, I was actually building the scenario in my mind about um, you being in the tennis shoes or the running shoes and then changing over into the dancing slippers. I actually mm -hmm. felt that for some of you, you've been running um, kind of striving to get everything done. Even in ministry, sometimes we can just run, 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 yes. run. And, you know, for those of you that are homemakers or working in areas of career, sometimes we get so driven by the needs out there that we're just run, 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 run. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like God saying, hey, sit down with me, take those running shoes off and put on some dancing slippers. And it speaks of intimacy, right? Intimacy. Yes. Is that we so need... Um, to be in that, just the presence of God yes. to renew our strength. And over the last few days, I keep getting out of Isaiah, you know, they that wait upon the Lord shall mm -hmm. renew their strength. Then they'll, they'll run and not be weary. But we gain our strength in that place. So it's so powerful. Yes, that place of just being intimate. And yeah, just exactly. Just filled with His presence, not running, you know. And that's where you gain your perspective. You know, I remember uh, my very first sovereign visitation into heaven. All of heaven was laughing. They were in this great joy. And, yeah. you know, we've been suffering a lot of things in the earth. And I was thinking, how can you be so happy when there's such trouble in the earth? And um, the Lord said, there is no anxiety here. There is no stress here. There is no worry. There's no pressure. There's nothing here except peace and joy and love. And that's where I want you to live your life from. Yeah. And as soon it. as we regain our perspective, we can uh, really move forward. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I was taken into an encounter, um, which I write about in my book, but at the, I was taken up to the banquet table one time and I just, I wanted to ask Jesus all these questions. And he said, just 
sit with me and just feast with me, Anna. And we sat and we laughed. Like we laughed wow. so hard. And I remember that that day, like everything in the natural, I should not have had supernatural joy. But see, I really learned from that experience, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Totally. And so, you know, I think that's such a key is the supernatural joy that you feel as you get into His presence. Yeah, and it says, in the presence of the Lord, that's where you find that fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. And I love Psalm 2, where it says, the Lord sits in the heavens and laughs. Yeah. I mean, He is looking at the enemy and all the enemy's work. And His response is, I'm just going to laugh because He is not concerned. And there's strength in that joy. There's strength in laughter that annihilates the enemy. You know, because it exposes his lies. Yeah. And sometimes um, I found myself just by faith choosing to laugh as a weapon. Yeah. You know, letting the joy. I'm choosing joy. You choose I don't joy. feel it right now, right. but I'm going to choose it. Right. And as a, a as a response to that, I'm going to laugh. Ha 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 ha. And sometimes and it's, yourself, it's just right? so put on, but, but it actually works. But eventually it works. It and works. Joy it takes breaks and you... open. Yes. Oh, some of you just need to grab a hold of that joy that Anna was talking about because it's available to you in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There's a mother right now, and you've been having trouble with your oldest child. In fact, they've been in trouble. They walked out the other night, and you've just been in despair. But the Lord wants you to know if you'll just rejoice in Him, God has a breakthrough for your child and a breakthrough for you. We're going to take a break right now. And when we come back, we're going to minister to you. We're going to minister His love and His grace and His, 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 His words of empowerment. This is my most favorite part of the program when we get to minister to you. And we have a couple of questions from viewers. And we just want to encourage you to write in and go online and maybe you have questions that you would like to be asked asked in in a uh, future program we welcome that but Anna we have a couple questions for you this first one is from uh, Tanya and she asks what if one has prayed for like a year and a half and then asked others to pray also read the Bible everything used God's name repented and the attack has not subsided what do you do then you know so many people ask me that question. It sounds like Tanya is doing everything great. Um, but I would just encourage her to surround herself, continue to surround herself with people in the body of Christ who can speak into like faith-filled right. statements into her life and not those of fear or, you know, because when we're in warfare, it's so easy to get isolated right. and pull away and and then we get consumed with wow. what's going on and we need we need each other. We it's really so do. It's so good, Anna. It's and so, so true, keep, too. Keep going, yeah. though. Keep running. Yeah. Keep going. Don't quit. But also just really make sure you've got a good net right on. to support you. That's beautiful. And for Tanya and others that might be relating to this, um, in relationship to having people around you, there is power in the prayer of agreement. So don't be shy about asking people to agree in prayer with you because it just accelerates everything and letting them stand with you in that and battle it with you. But the other thing is ask your friends and those close to you, do you see anything in me that might need to be tweaked or an area of my life that maybe I'm not aware of because that's been really valuable in my life is to have people around me where I've given them permission and said, mm -hmm. if you see anything at all um, that needs to be aligned with God, just let me know because I want to make sure I have um, no landing strip for the enemy. So that might help also. Not saying that there is something, but to double check it is really helpful because when we're looking at someone else, we got a more objective view than when we're looking at ourselves. So true. So true. Here's another one for you, Anna. Um, this is written from Mig Migdalia, I think is, is how you explain uh, uh, or um, pronounce her name. It says, how can we be offensive instead of defensive in spiritual warfare to stop attacks of the enemy from happening in the first place? Yeah, the Word of God is so powerful. And I think that we need to be applying it to our lives daily. 
meditating on his word and speaking it over our life and over our children and over our family and use that sword yeah. and really use it, you know? <laughs> and um, I do that and I'm, I feel convicted to do it more as I'm saying this. I'm going, I got to do it more. You know, I know it, but we've got to do it. But mm -hmm. that puts us where we're not on the defense all the time, but we've, you know, we're on the offense. Yeah. It's like, don't wait until you have a battle to activate the yeah. word and your praise. It says that God is enthroned on the praises of his people. Therefore, his authority comes down. So you can actually be proactive in that. And when you decree the word, it is just like so powerful. Um, because you're sending out the word ahead of you. And so when the enemy tries to come in, he's got to hit that word, right? So decree the word of God in faith, and it'll be uh, very helpful to you. Anna, can I ask you to release an impartation and a refreshment to the people who are watching so that they can put their dancing shoes on? Yeah. I just hear this word for somebody. I hear the phrase, two words, refuel and reset. So I'm going to pray right now in Jesus name. I just pray the ability to reset and refuel right now. God, I pray for breakthrough and just the impartation of just supernatural strength and and energy as well. For those who feel weary, I actually come against a spirit of weariness and I break it off of you. I just decree by his stripes, you've been healed and set free from all the assaults and attacks of the enemy. And you are going to feel and experience immense breakthrough right now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us on today's program. But I want to give an invitation to those of you who might not know Jesus Christ as your Savior yet. There is no other name under heaven by which man can be saved, only by his. And Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He's knocking on the door of your heart right now. They want you to invite him in, to turn your life over to him, to start following him, you know, receiving the forgiveness of all of your sin. And when you pray that prayer, when you invite him to do that, guess what? He will not hesitate. He will come in and you will have a brand new life. Again, thank you for joining us today and go out the rest of the week and go live that supernatural life. You have gifts. God expects you to use them. If you need training to school your gift, log on to schoolofthespirit.tv. You'll find training in spiritual warfare, prophetic ministry, prayer, seers ministry, writing, and so much more. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv today. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.